Ever feel like AI is just humans pretending to be robots? Well, sometimes it literally is. The founder of Nate and at promising AI powered checkouts has been indicted for fraud. Why? Because instead of algorithms, he allegedly used hundreds of contractors overseas to manually process these transactions. He managed to convince investors this was cutting edge technology and raised over $40 million. It's like selling a Roomba that's secretly powered by a hamster in a wheel. He's now facing jail time, reminding us that fake it to you make it has its limits, specifically, prison time limits. OpenAI's model names are getting as confusing as Marvel timelines, but here we go, meet O3 and O4 Mini, their new reasoning models. O3 is their smartest model yet, setting benchmarks across the board on performance tests, while O4 Mini is the speedy, budget-friendly option for developers who consider ramen a food group. These reasoning models can now also use tools like web browsing and Python, basically giving ChatGPT access to the internet's infinite wisdom and questionable code snippets. So now we've got O3, O4 Mini, O4 Mini High, GPT-40, GPT-40 with scheduled tasks, and GPT-4.1 taking over GPT-4.5, which is now being depreciated. Not sure about you, but I appreciate how logical and easy to understand they've made all this. The White House is ordering federal agencies to name AI officers and come up with AI strategies. They're ditching Biden era orders intended to safeguard AI. Apparently these orders impose unnecessary bureaucratic restrictions. The Office of Management and Budget wants agencies to implement minimum risk practices and develop a generative AI policy promoting forward-leaning approach. Agencies have six months to develop an AI strategy that identifies and removes barriers to responsible AI use. The White House wants to drive efficient acquisition of artificial intelligence within government. So interoperability is key with the agencies to maximize the use of American-made AI. Gotta love the patriotism. Many government agencies have already touted AI use, such as the FFA using machine learning to scan incident reports, because what could possibly go wrong with forward-leaning government AI? Remember when finding something on Netflix felt like rummaging through a digital bargain bin? Well, they're testing an AI fix using OpenAI, promising searches way more specific than action movie with explosions. You can apparently ask for stuff based on how you feel, like show me a rom-com that won't make me question all my life choices. It's opt-in for some lucky iOS users down under with US rollout coming, well, eventually. So prepare AI to judge your viewing habits even more personally. You know all this talk about AI taking over? Well, on music front, it's kinda happening. Deezer is reporting that a wild 18% of its daily uploads are now entirely AI generated. That translates to over 20,000 AI tracks hitting the platform every single day, nearly double the rate from just four months ago. To handle this tidal wave, Deezer rolled out a detection tool back in January, attempting to weed these algorithm anthems out of our recommendations completely. Contrast with the approach that Spotify is taking, whose co-president essentially shrugged and said, eh, if AI stuff is made legally and people are listening to them, let them listen to them. A stance as reassuring as a pilot who's trained on Microsoft Flight Simulator. Meanwhile, labels are suing AI firms, artists are worried. Yeah, things are definitely getting really interesting in the music industry. Now, imagine trying to throw a backyard barbecue, but the city says, cool, join the 3000 long line and we'll call you in 2026. That's basically PGM's PowerPoint Q, 3000 projects, 286 gigawatts, and application freeze to mid 26. Google, sick of the waiting for the vaults to feed its AI, uh, I mean servers, just teamed up with Alphabet's Moonshot Shop Tapestry to jam some AI into the paperwork itself. The plan? Models at sanity check forms, pick the best grid hookups, and stop renewables getting punted to the nosebleed section. Why the rush? Nationwide, there's 2.6 terawatts clogging the interconnected pipes, twice America's current output. So this isn't a trickle, it's a cost cost size juice box. If the AI shortcut works, Google gets greener power faster, PGM looks less Jurassic, and the rest of us might dodge brownouts when we ask ChatGP to write a haiku about tacos. Fingers crossed the robots can process forms better than the humans that built them. You know how your parents always said, don't worry, we'll figure out how to pay for it, right after announcing an expensive family trip? Well, that's kind of like ASML right now. The world's biggest supplier of chip making gear is staring down potentially new tariffs, emitting uncertainty to their 2025-2026 outlook. But don't worry, because they're totally ready to pass most of those costs onto their customers, especially those in the US. Generous. So while the ARS keeps chugging along, fueled by ASML's fancy EUV machines, the price tag for those chips might just get a little steeper, thanks to our good friend, the tariff. And get ready for your house to become a little more... circle. 
Samsung's Borley, the AI companion robot that's been teased more times than a new season of your favorite cancelled show, is finally getting out this summer. Partnered with Google Cloud, they've juiced up Borley with Google's Gemini, turning it from a concept into a chatty home managing orb. It'll handle things like lights, offer styling tips, basically R2D2 meets Alexa. When its ability to understand voice, visuals, and sensor data sounds impressive, Let's hope its navigation is a bit better than my attempts at assembling IKEA furniture. And NVIDIA is bringing some chip production to America, starting with the Blackwell AI GPU manufactured at TSMC's fancy new plant in Arizona. Guess they wanted their AI chips closer to the sunshine and, well, probably the massive government subsidies. These Blackwell bad boys are built using TSMC's 4 nanometer process, which is tiny, but not as tiny as the chances of you actually affording one. It's all part of the making chips stateside, because apparently relying entirely on one island for the world's most critical tech is maybe not the best plan. Google is giving its workspace suite a serious AI power-up, starting with workspace flows. This isn't just a simple automation, it's designed to tackle those complex, multi-step workflows requiring actual brain power, the mind-numbing tasks like chasing approvals. You describe what you need in plain English and Flow builds the process using customizable AI gems. This intelligence is also landing in your everyday tools. Google Docs, for example, gets help me refine to act like a writing coach, suggesting ways to strengthen arguments and clarify points, alongside your audio features letting you listen to your documents. Over in Google Sheets, help me analyze acts like an on-demand analyst, finding trends and creating charts, even if you're not a spreadsheet wizard. The aim is to let AI handle more grunt work across the board. On the creative front, Google is also rolling out its VO2 video generating AI model to pay Gemini Advanced users. Subscribers can now create these short 8 second video clips at 720p resolution directly from Gemini itself, complete with watermarks. While currently limited, these clips can be downloaded or shared. It's also integrated into experimental Google Labs feature called Whiskey Animate, which lets users turn generated images into these short videos. It seems Google is keen to compete in the AI video space, giving users new tools for visual creation content. That's it for this week. Tune in next week for some quick AI news.